Hello there. Uh, so this is Jonathan with Action Desk, and I want to show you today uh, a quick demo of Action Desk. Um, so let's pretend that we are a business analyst at Airbnb, and we want to build the two following dashboards and having them automated. So I just want to set them uh, up once, and I don't want to have to do any work after that. Um, all right, so let's just have a quick look at the dashboard. So the first thing is we want to have the number of bookings per price segment. And we've defined three different price segments, uh, less than $200, 200 to 800 and more than 800 And then uh, we want the same metric as a percentage as well. And the second dashboard is where we want to see the number of bookings per month. Uh, and we want to see the gross rate. So pretty straightforward things. Um, so how do we build this with Action Desk? So the first thing is we're going to need our raw data. So let's be, let's um, treat a new spreadsheet that we're going to call bookings. So we're going to use a key feature of Action Desk, which is the import feature. Um, so how does this work? So if you're a new user, you'll have to create a new data source and I'm not going to go through that whole process, um, but um, you'd have to choose your uh, type of data source and enter your credentials. Uh, it's a quick uh, process if you have the credentials um, that, that you need. Um, now let's just take this um, database I've already connected uh, with my Airbnb data. And I'm going to import a table called Airbnb bookings. Um, not when I select uh, this uh, table, then I have a list of columns, the list of attributes of that table. So here, I'm going to need the ID of the booking. I'm going to need the property ID, you'll understand very soon why. I'm going to need the booking date and the steps. All right, so let's proceed with the import. Let me move this around. So let's give it a few seconds. So what this will do is create uh, what we call a table in Action Desk. And the table is the data coming directly from the data source, which will be refreshed automatically um, every hour. So right now we can see that our last refresh was done right now. Um, and then automatically we'll refresh that data, that data every hour. All right, so let's just go back quickly to our dashboard. We want to have the number of bookings per price segment. Now, as you can see, we don't have the price of each booking. It's actually a, a, a data we have in the properties table. Um, also, we want this data for a specific country, Canada, right here. Um, and by the way, I forgot to say that at the beginning, but we want to be able to change that um, input here and having the data uh, updated um, as a result. All right. so. To, to recap, we need the country information and the price information. And we have these two information in the properties table. So let's go ahead and import properties this time. I'll just go faster because I think you understood how it works. So I'll select my database and I'll select the properties table. I'll choose the ID. Uh, I want the country, I want the price, and I think that's it. All right, great. So now I'm going to need to retrieve that information, the country and the price in the bookings tip. So in Excel or Google Sheets, I would do a VLOOKUP, right? So we have a function that's very similar that we call lookup. Um, and I'm going to do that. So I'll add to the table a column by just adding a, uh, a title to this column. And as you can see, it creates automatically a, an empty column in the table. Then I'm going to write my formula. So let's go ahead. So the formula is a bit different than in Excel Google Sheets. Uh, we think it's, it's better uh, and simpler. So there are only three parameters. So the first one is the, um, the ID of the current table, right? So in that case, we're going to look up in the properties table. So the ID is going to be the ID of the property in the table here. So that's why I chose to get the property ID. The second parameter is going to be the matching ID in the other 
table. So let me go to the properties sheet and this time I'm going to choose the ID, uh, which matches the property ID in the other table, right? And third, uh, I want to I want the column that I want to look at, right? So in that case, I want the country. So that's it. And by the way, if your country uh, column was on the left of the ID column, that wouldn't be a problem, uh, unlike in Google Sheet or Excel. Cool. So I have my country information. Now I'm going to do the same thing with price. I'll go faster because I think you understood. So property ID. ID and the third column would be the price. Great. Now, let's just go back quickly to the dashboard that we want. Um, we want to break down per price segment. So right now, what we have is the exact price of each booking, uh, but we don't have the price segment information, right? So we're going to have to add uh, what we call a computed column. So a new column with um, the information price segment. All right, so to do this, I'm going to do a nested if. Uh, the first condition is going to be, if the price is less than 200, then I want the formula to return less than 200. All right, makes sense. If it's greater than 200, then I have two other conditions. If it's greater than 200 and less than 800, so I'm going to do my nested if, so less than 800. In that case, I want to return this text 200 to 800. Now else, I'm in my third branch. If none of the first two conditions are true, it means that the price is more than 800. And in that case, I want to return more than 800. Close the parentheses, press enter, and that's it. As you can see, um, I just need to write the formula once. I don't need to copy and paste it on all the rows. And you know what? In one hour, when my data refreshes and I have more rows in my data set, I'm not going to have to bother about you know making sure my uh, my formula is applies to the right rows. I'm not going to you know for advanced Google Sheets users or Excel, you might know that you can do this with array formulas, but here you don't need to bother uh, doing that. Um, all right, cool. So now I have all the information I need in my raw data uh, to um, to build my dashboard. So here I want to the, the the number of effective bookings. So it's all the bookings that have the status success, and I want them to, for each price segment and for a particular country. So I have three conditions. I can do that with a contest. So count this with three conditions. The first condition is I want the status to be equal to success. So again, as you can see, I just had to click on any cell of the column and it selected the whole uh, column status. Second condition is I want the price segment to be equal to that cell right here. And then um, the third condition is uh, the country to be equal to um, the cell A2. And I'm going to copy paste that formula. So I want to lock the A2 cell. So I can do like in uh, Google Sheet or Excel. I can add uh, dollars. And we're going to have a shortcut very soon uh, to do this. All right. So I'll copy and paste this formula. And while it's computed, I'll just sum here to have the total rows. And I'll put that in bold. And again, while it's computed, uh, while it's computing right right now, it's it's not computed. Sorry. And now I'm just going to compute the um, percentage. So here I'm going to use a shortcut. Can you try again? I'm going to use a shortcut Option Four on Mac, F Four on Windows uh, to lock the D eight cell. That gives me the percentage, and I didn't find places. sorry, my series. Uh, I think I'm talking to him or her. Uh, all right, so percentage, and I'll decrease the decimals. All right, great. Now I want to build the second dashboard. Um, so again, I don't have the month's information, 
Uh, if I go back to the bookings, I have the book exact booking date, so a specific day. And I basically want to put my data per month. So I'll create a new column. And the format I want is year underscore month number. So I'll use a year function. Uh, I can pass a date to that function and to, will return a year. And I concatenate this with an underscore and concatenate it with the months. Right. Let's do it a few seconds. By the way, just if you're wondering, uh, I have 15,000 rows in that data set. If you'd like to check that, I could just do a count on any column of uh, that table and you'll have the uh, results. It would be much faster if it was a, a smaller um, data set. All right, cool. So now I have my month information. So again, I'm going to use a count if. Actually, you know what? I'm going to reuse that formula here and slightly modify it. So this time I'm going to keep the country condition, but I don't need the pricing on condition, right? So I'll just add the uh, months condition. So I'll select the months column here and then select the months here. And that's it. I'm copying and pasting this formula. And then I can calculate the gross percentage right here. And while it's computing, I'll add it properly. And here it is. So I have everything. And so right now, I'm pretty much done. Um, my raw data is going to be refreshed automatically every hour. I don't need to make sure my formulas, you know, my computed columns, my lookups uh, apply to the right rows. Um, it's going to be done automatically. Um, so I'm done. And now if I want to play with the data, I can just change uh, the cell here. And for example, with France, I'm sure you know by now that I'm French, given my accent. And I'm going to take a few seconds I'm going to recompute all the formulas um, with the new parameter for the country. And yeah, so here it is. And again, you can play with this um, as much as you want. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Hope that was helpful.